Peace and blessings. This is Nubia I, the raw food goddess, the womb priestess, and the holistic practitioner. Good morning, my brothers and my sisters. So today I want to talk about raw foods. You know, actually last Friday I uploaded a video about raw foods. And the only reason why I took the video down was because I really wanted to go more in depth about raw foods and my experience being raw for almost four May will make four years. May 4th will make four years. So next month I've been a raw foodist for four years. Have I always been 100% raw? No. And I'm glad in a way that I haven't always been because uh, going back and forth, you really, really know and really start to know the benefits of raw foods and why your body likes raw foods a lot better. And so let me just kind of give you a high, um, some outlines about um, my experience of raw food. So um, there's nothing, absolutely nothing like being 100% raw. Is it the best way to eat? Yes. For me, it is the best way to eat to be 100% raw. Let me tell you things I notice when I go back to cook food, whether it's cook food, I have it once a month or, you know, once every couple of months or if I have a little bit of it, or a lot, it really doesn't matter. What's happening in the body is that when you start to move higher, uh, you know, elevate in your, in your diet, your body really likes it. Not only your body really likes it, your body really wants it. So for me, being a vegetarian or vegan for 20-something years is really wonderful. But for me being, and, and, but I had like transitions, you know, I went from a meat eater, I grew up in a traditional, you know, black American home, we ate traditional uh, foods as far as uh, chicken and, you know, pork chops and fried fish and uh, potato salad and collard greens and, you know, macaroni and cheese. I mean, you know, standard to me American diet and um, with a little African American flavor in there, so soul food. And when I came to California, I decided really easily, I don't know, it was the atmosphere, the people that I was around was mostly vegetarian, the availability of fresh produce, I became a vegetarian. Was I a good vegetarian? Not at first. Actually, in a way, no, I say that I was because the first book that I read was Queen of Fool, Heal Thyself, and I really followed it to a T, and it changed my life. So I became a vegetarian. Then I met a brother who was a Rasta, who in a sense was even a better vegetarian than me, and a longer, at that point, vegetarian than me. So he really added a lot to my life. And it was very, it was very restrictive, though, to create a, the Rasta diet at that point. As, at, thus far, at that point, it was very restrictive because there was no salt. We really did foods with th new sugar. So everything was very ital, and just, but a lot of provisions, a lot of starch. And so I feel like I became more of a starchitarian as opposed to a vegetarian. A vegetarian, I mean, the word itself implies that you eat a lot of vegetables. And at that time, I was eating much more vegetables than I had grown up with in Brooklyn, but still not a lot. And so, but I still went on with a vegetarian. I started adding vegan soy products to my life, which now we know soy is not really good for the body. Uh, it's just not really good for anybody, whether it's a child or a grown-up. And it could be just as detrimental to the body as a tremendous amount of dairy, whether that comes in the form of cheese or milk or, or, or any other, or ice cream or any other form that you could think of. So, but still, a lot of tofu, you know, really came up. And then I really started reading Heal Thyself again and other vegetarian books over and over again. And one thing I was fascinated about in most vegetarian books as well is that there's a, there's a, like, it's like you have to graduate. So it's okay to start off at a vegetarian maybe doing those soy products, although you know better now, so maybe you won't. But then your body actually will take in the food, and you'll be doing really good for years, and after a while you'll notice that you're not feeling that well. You feel sluggish, you get tired easily, you're, you still may be catching colds, and so you know that there's something that needs to be changed. You feel pain in your body. Pain is an indication that something is not right in the body and whatever you're doing, you should stop, right? 
so that's what I did. I stopped that and I decided to really be a vegan because every once in a while I would eat cheese, you know, some dairy, some pizza. And I was like, you know what? I really want to be a vegetarian, <laughs> one who eats vegetables. And so, as you know, life would have it. I met another man of a six-year relationship. This man ate more salads than anybody I ever known in my life. And so, therefore, he introduced me to the world of salads. And I, ch I was dancing. I was performing. I was doing my poetry. I mean, I just came out. And I also was doing Sa uh, Sacred Woman. Uh, if you ever get a book by Queen of Four, so I'm, I'm doing these uh, these kind of like rituals that I get up every morning. I'm adding sea salt to my life. I'm doing yoga and meditation. Took me to the next level of veganism, vegetarianism. It was wonderful. But still eating lots of cooked food. And then about four years ago, I meet a sister who really was in love with raw foods, and she was like, I call her raw food chef. She started preparing all these raw foods. She gave them to me. I was instantly hooked, became a raw foodist, and my life has never been different. And, uh, um, or really never been the same, and never been this different. This is a different way of being, different way of knowing and seeing life, because that's what raw foods do. They just open up your third eye, your pineal gland, in a way that, in a way that mine has never been opened before. You be thinking that you're reaching all these higher, you know, grounds, and then you realize, hmm, I can be higher, naturally. And so I really enjoyed raw foods. But of course, every once in a while, the something I meet the man I'm presently with now, and he was not a raw foodist when I met him. He wasn't even a vegan when I met him. He was a meat eater, but he was so ready to change his life. <laughs> and so we, you know, he got, he was definitely much more raw. He was stop eating meat, maybe fish occasionally, really did raw well, took to it like why. And we were just having a ball being raw, but every once in a while, I would, he would cook, and I would want the food. The smell is familiar. The smell is delicious. There's still today, cooked food smells absolutely delicious to me. And then when you eat it, it tastes good too. And so, I would like fall, in a sense, I would have a cooked meal, and I would feel it. So some of the things that I felt when I would eat cooked foods after being raw for two years, I think at that point, I would instantly I would get what they call, what raw food is called, the cooked food hangover. So just like if you drank all night, you know, the night before, and then you woke up the next morning, you would have headaches, nausea, you feel sluggish, you're very just, you're tired, you want to sleep right away as soon as you eat the food. And it's because the body is like, what just happened? You just put all this in me and now I have to kind of wake up just to digest all this food and assimilate it and then try to extrapolate some type of nutrients from food that really is devoid now of nutrients because they were really, they were just fried out, cooked out, steamed out, you know. And your body's like, come on now, you know, really? <laughs> and so, you know, I have to laugh because, I mean, th I, I've been back and forth. And I, if you look at some of my videos, I make videos the next day. Oh, my God, I just ate raw foods. I feel horrible. You know, I got the videos, so please. Or I just ate cooked foods, rather, and I feel terrible. And so I would, though, you know, I would just dust myself up <laughs> off and get back on that horse the very next day or maybe the very next meal. I make a green smoothie. I drink some spirulina, put it in my water. I would even fast if I had to get back on the raw food journey, doing great for months, and then boom, have another uh, cooked food or a cooked food meal. Let me tell you why I'm really explaining this and telling this to you. Because the new people that watch me that want to know about raw foods, you're going to embark on a raw food journey. And for a while, you're going to be doing really, really well. <laughs> I mean, really, really well. And then something's going to trigger. It could be an argument with your, your loved one or a family member. 
It could be an old memory coming up again. It could be just being in a space where you're around a lot of cooked food and that brings up, again, like I said, memories and ideas and thoughts that you used to have, a life that you used to live. And in a sense, almost missing that way of being. And also, particularly in social settings, it's kind of difficult when everybody's eating this way and you're not. But it could be done. And in the end, you prevail because you feel so darn good. You know, raw foods reverses the aging process, or in a sense, it's not really even reversing the aging process. It was that we were prematurely aging from the cooked foods and the amount of cooked foods that we were eating. And so in a sense, it actually brings your body back into balance and brings you back into aging what would be normally if you were on raw foods. It would not be. We, we accepted the aging process on cooked foods as normal when in fact it's not normal. It's abnormal. And so it kind of brings you back in balance. It actually does. And so when you do cooked food, your body has to work a little harder, which takes much more energy, which then leaves you depleted, which then starts the aging process, right? So... Uh, you know, on the journey, three years, still doing it four years. So recently, I, last Friday and the Friday before, my daughter was, was on spring break, I took her out to a restaurant, vegan restaurant, but it is cooked food. And both times I had cooked foods, and both times I paid for it. What happens to me is, so cooked food is very acidic to the body, and live foods are very alkalizing to the body. So they, the, the thought is and the idea is that disease cannot live in an alkaline body. And so you want to be more alkaline, at least 80% and less acidic. You don't want to be more acidic. And so right away when I now eat cooked foods, those two days that I ate cooked food, I felt my burning sensation in my chest, what people will call heartburn, my <laughs> My liver and kidneys were feeling a burning sensation because they're working so hard and also because my body has now become an acidic environment. But more than that, what I notice when I eat cooked food, I become very um, indecisive, uh, confused mentally, uh, argumentative, um, uh, uh, emotional, sometimes even depressed. I start questioning my path. I start questioning my relationships. I start to feel irritable. So there's something going on. And what's going on is me, my body, is spirit is saying, why are you trying to do that? You, you way past that. It's like trying to hang out with people that you know that you outgrown, that you know that you don't have anything in common with anymore, but that pull or that pressure, if you will, to go backwards is there. And I just want raw foodists to know this may not happen to all raw foodists, but I, I, will be, I would be uh, not honest if I didn't say that it probably will happen within the first three to four years. You may go off raw foods. And don't be scared or don't be mad at yourself or don't be um, judgmental to, uh, about your, to yourself about it. And that's what I really was talking about in the last video. You got to be okay with it because it's not where you are. You've been cooked. You've been eating cooked food, which is very addictive, a lot longer than you've been eating raw foods. So if you go back, you go forward again because you won't like the way it feels. But if you keep saying, oh, I'm horrible and I have no willpower and I can't do it and I'm not really a raw foodist because I ate a cooked meal, I don't think that's going to be very helpful to you. When I'm on raw foods, my expression is so beautiful. The way I feel, the love that I feel in my heart, the love that I have to give to others is so full. My ideas, my thoughts, my, my processing, my mental processing is higher, faster, you know, more connected to. I can connect ideas. I have more perception. I'm, I'm perceiving things in a more expansive way. I'm kinder and gentler and loving. You know, I don't cuss. Uh, I, I see the other person's side. I, it's just a beautiful way to be. 
And so in the last video, I commented on a lot of our uh, um, kind of spiritual healers in a sense, so particularly a lot of our male spiritual healers, I've been noticing um, who are vegetarians, vegans, or even raw foodists, you know, so they say, um, sometimes I know why we as African Americans are so angry about situations that are going on in our communities, but I don't think it would be good for us to start to blame each other or put each other down or, or speak to each other in ways that we have to use profanity. Now some people say it doesn't really matter, but to me the words actually affect you. If we look at the work of Emoto, a Japanese um, I'm going to say scholar who really did some great research on the power of thoughts and, and water and how water holds energy. And so you can speak over a glass of water or you could even pray or meditate over a glass of water and depending on what you're thinking and feeling, the water traps that energy. And he had the, the water created formation. So when you were thinking of and speaking thoughts of love, the waters would crystallize into these beautiful, wonderful patterns. But when you were speaking words of hate or negative words or thoughts of hate or just fear or doubt, the, the water would crystallize into these really horrendous looking, uh, ugly, really formations. And so, in a sense, if we don't believe that our words have power, Emoto has proven that we do. So, it's really a beautiful kind of like a uh, thing to see. And so, what I feel with raw foods is, I don't say it takes away the anger, but it allows the love to come through. And so that when you speak, your words are words of love. I think that people really do feel love and accept love and really want to be in that vibrational frequency of love. And so sometimes when I see our leaders or our, our, our new, you know, I think like our new revolutionaries are the revolutionaries that are really talking about the high metaphysics, which we have many of them, that are really talking about the food, and we have so many of them. And so it's so beautiful to see these brothers when they get on YouTube and do YouTubes. I love to hear the messages. But yes, sometimes for me, and it may be you could say I'm wrong or whatever, I can't take the cussing and the being called kind of stupid and particularly I really don't like the way that women are talked about or women are are considered or women are treated a lot of times so we have these very conscious very beautiful very dome expanding as one of my sisters says information that a lot of brothers in the revolutionary movement of food and metaphysics are, are spewing really, but then it's coupled with sometimes misogynistic, um, um, maybe lack of respect for women. My brothers and my sisters, we as a community, we as men and women cannot continue this battle of the sexes. We cannot continue this homophobic, misogynistic way of being towards each other. We are entering and have entered into the fifth dimension. We are entered into the divine feminine. She has been so suppressed for so long because it's been men, and even for black people, men that look like us, men of our color, men of our culture, who have continuously blamed us for every child that has went the wrong way. It's the woman's fault, some believe. Some believe that women should not read. They're not supposed to read or they're not supposed to talk, or they're not supposed to profess, or they're not supposed to be ministers, they're not supposed to be preachers. People that grew up in the church know that there was a time when a woman did not speak on the pulpit and preach. These notions have to die, as, or we will not make it as a species. Women are capable of professing. Women are capable of speaking sermons. Women are capable of reading and delivering beautiful, beautiful information. And it does not make her gay or lesbian or a dyke. And this is the terms that I've seen used. And if she is gay or a lesbian, it doesn't take anything from who and what she has to say. 
So it's very important that we, we as a community, remember that we are whole beings and that we need our men, but they need us as well. We are not, you know, put to the back. You know, behind every man is a good woman. Not anymore. I'm next to him. Sometimes I'm ahead of. We have information that is valuable and equal to the information of our beautiful brothers, and we must believe that. I do believe that we have the masculine and the feminine in each of us, male or female. Many of our, our newly scholars or our scholars, you know, our metaphysicians, don't believe it, and that's okay. We all ha are entitled, you know, to our opinion, but... For me, I don't know, when I'm eating well and I'm learning about my culture and I'm learning about the metaphysics, all I want to do is love and bring together. I'm about my eye, and my eye in the comedic belief system represents balance, order, reciprocity. You know, so the love, I am more, I, there's, there's some scholars or New scholars that are on YouTube, because people, and I'm going to tell you why I made this video too. People ask me, who do I watch? Who do I admire? Who do I on YouTube think that, uh, that yeah, who, who, who are the people that I watch on YouTube? And I really think it's a great question. And it's not some of the pop, I used to watch, uh, you know, uh, a powerful brother, you know, in Southern California. Love, his information is amazing. His delivery for me, for me, just a little too harsh, a little too misogynist. There's a hint to me of maybe not really, or maybe having issues with black women. I can feel it sometimes. And even if it's not true, I'm feeling something. So that makes me shy away a little bit from that kind of presentation, although the information is amazing. So, I watch scholars like uh, Ivan Van Sertima, uh, Dr. Joy, who really does a lot of talk about post-traumatic slave syndrome. And what uh, she's humorous, she delivers with love, she has vital information. Dr. John Henry Clark, which is now uh, uh, passed away. Uh, uh, Francis Cress Welsing. I mean, there are um, Dr. Ben, uh, Dr. Um, oh my God, so many wonderful scholars, but those are the ones I was watching Ivan Van Sertima last night. He is, when you finish with him, and after you listen to his lectures and John Henry Clark, you feel alive, you feel proud, you feel uplifted, you feel like you want to do something more. I don't want to listen to anybody that makes me, just because I'm a woman, somehow I'm less than. Somehow I have, I, I'm diseased. Somehow I'm angry. Somehow I'm, you know, the cause of all the ills in the African American race. We have to stop believing that as women. This is a new paradigm shift. And our place is beside our men and their place is beside us. We have to strive for balance and love and respect for each other or we will not make it. We still have to, it's just because we've entered into 2013 doesn't mean that we have reached this, you know, apex of balance and divine feminine energy. Some people still don't really understand divine feminine energy and still sometimes push it down and maybe they don't even know. I believe that raw foods can open your heart your mind and your spirit. And the way I know is because when I do eat cooked foods, I, am, I become somewhat angry. I become irritable. I become profane in my language to my loved ones at times. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to hurt people with my words. I want to love people with my words. So, yeah. <laughs> Like it or not, this is what I have to say. Sisters, you don't have to listen to anybody because the information is mostly good. But if you feel like you're being put down or you're being blamed, then why would you participate in something that doesn't make you feel good unless it makes you feel good? You know, I was thinking about, and Dr. Joy uh, definitely would agree, I'm sure. I'm, I'm, please check her out. 
um, I was really thinking about um, post-traumatic slave syndrome. And it's the idea of post-traumatic slave syndrome is that we as African Americans are damaged. And that because of slavery and the hundreds of years that we were enslaved and the many years after so-called slavery was abolished, we have suffered great psychological traumas. And one of them is self-hatred on many levels, the hatred of each other on many levels. We've carried the anger, the misogynistic ways. You know, we are not as tolerant with each other, with the hatred of each other at times. And so it's something to think about. So I propose that raw foods can actually help you um, open up to a place where it's even beyond black or white or anything. And that you're really living on this high spiritual level where you really see the God and goddess in everyone. And that's a point to get to. But I'll tell you, in this society, if women can be looked at as the goddesses that she is and told every day how wonderful she is, another brother is Renoko Rashidi. You want to listen to things that as a woman, and I'm talking to my sisters, as a woman, you are so uplifted. You feel like you can do anything. You don't want to feel like you are nothing and that you have to get better so that you can get a man and have a man. My friend Jerry John, my brother from Haiti, did a wonderful uh, uh, um article. He wrote a wonderful article, um, and I'm going to do my best to try to link that article uh, to my video about the beauty of the black woman. And he's not angry with her. He doesn't blame her for the fact that she's, that, or that she's you know, degenerate or that she's uh, backwards or that she doesn't know anything. He reveres her. And we as women have to be revered. And brothers, we need your help. We are your mothers. We are your sisters. We are your wives. We are your lovers. And we are your parents. So, you know, respect due to the queens because we are rising. That kundalini is rising. Yes, lioness says, please step up and take your rightful place as the goddesses of the earth. We have problems as women. Yes, we do. We fight among each other. And I believe because we're competitive, we're in competition for the affection of men and, and the belief that there are, the men are scarce. And so we desperately will take almost anyone just to have someone. You don't have to do that. Get on your raw fools, take your sea salt bath and love yourself more and you will have a king that bigs you up that uplifts you and that loves you. But you have to take the first step. And so at the same time, if you don't want other people to put you down, we have to stop putting ourselves down when we so-called make a mistake, when we so-called don't go all the way, when we so-called can't stay on our raw food journey forever or for always. Because the idea is you just get back on that horse and get back on that horse and love yourself again and again and again. I love y'all so much and I love myself so much and I only want to view things of a positive nature. If I am watching something, no matter how wonderful the metaphysician may be, if he is telling me that, um, or using derogatory terms to describe parts of my body, do you using derogatory terms to, to describe parts of my mind, using derogatory terms to, de to describe parts of my spirit, I don't care how much knowledge he's spitting, I'm not going to watch it because like food, that's food for thought. If I take in negativity, even on a, on a, a verbal level, then I'm eating that and that is not reacting well into my body. But if people speak words of love and affection, even if they're fiery, because I'm fiery, if the love and affection is felt, then I'll take those beautiful words in as food. Because remember, we keep thinking that raw food is just what we put in our mouths. But raw food is what we put in our minds as well. 
raw foods is what we receive from our heart as well. We have to stop accepting this uh, image of a male as, you know, strong, right, but meaning and, and, and leader leading us and knows best and we have to follow them and submit to them. I don't really understand this thing. We, what is this submission thing? I don't understand it because submit to him and what, I, I mean, people explain it to me, please, because I think that we are equal. And it doesn't mean that we play the same parts or we play the same role, but we are equal. Equal in intelligence, equal in encouragement, equal in love, equal in intelligence. And I know I said that again, I'll have to say it again. This is my partner, not my daddy. This is... It, it just the balance and the love, and once we start to see it, what a beautiful world it could be. So uh, I love raw foods, and I will. Uh, I want to be a better raw foodist, and I understand that that's what I'm going for. So when I fall, I'm okay with it because now I realize after four years that that's gonna might happen, probably happen, but one day it won't. I don't eat meat anymore, so it tells you that you can change, okay? So anyway, um, I just want to spread this because you ask me, uh, people ask me, who do I watch on YouTube? I watch people that I believe love me. I watch people that I believe love women. And, uh, and I watch, whether that's male or female, and I watch people that I believe truly love themselves. So that's my take on love and healing and it's not to be fake you know we do have a lot of anger and notice that when you are angry do you cuss more do you yell more do you scream more do you take things out on people do you put people down and notice when you're happy and joyful do you speak words of love do you bring people closer to you do you see the good in everyone or at least the people that are around you it's a feeling it's a vibrational frequency as well and if we're talking about a high vibrational frequency, I don't know if calling each other names is a high vibrational frequency. So, yeah, I'm raw. I've been raw. I did, like I said, the Friday that I ate the uh, cooked food. I paid for it. I was sluggish the next day, tired, so I fasted. And then I did drink green, I, I feasted. <laughs> I had green smoothies and water and herbal teas and, you know, just, and I laid down all day and slept. And I really took very good care of myself. And I feel great. So anyway, for those who are newly starting on the journey, I would love to take you there. I have various packages on my website at www.theblackberrybeauty.com. And uh, I would love for all of you to at least go to the website and check out, and maybe there's a package there for you, consultations. I'm usually always running some special, and I hope you participate. My sisters especially, you are so intelligent, and if you knew your history, please watch the historians that I mentioned. You would know how much uh, and how advanced and how sophisticated you are. You would know the queens that you are, that the sacred feminine etiquette that you carry and the sacred feminine power that you carry, that many people, and sometimes even our own men, are still very afraid of. But tell them they don't have to be afraid. You are taking them with you. You are loving them through the process. And you are standing beside them, not behind them, and not below them. This is Nubia I, the raw food goddess, the womb priestess, and the holistic practitioner. And I'm sending you much love and blessings. Hotep.